from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Joe McNabb, Northeast Indemnity. Hi, Joe. Good to hear your voice. It's not mutual, Johnny. And I always thought you cared. Whenever I hear your voice, it's because I'm in trouble. Oh, what is it this time? Ever hear of Harvey Stone? Sure, the Stone Corporation. And Stone Enterprises and the Stone Foundation. Sounds like he's a foundation himself. Practically. Late 30s, bachelor. Took over the management from his father, E.J., when the old boy got crippled up with arthritis last year. So? So the total amount of insurance we're carrying on him is over 100000 So? He lives in New York, Westchester County. Last night he was driving along a road in the country. A small object hit his windshield. Oh, look, Joe, don't tell me you want me to investigate a claim for a broken windshield. I sure do, Johnny. That small object was a bullet. <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To Northeast Indemnity Associates, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenditures during my investigation of the imperfect alibi matter. Expense account item one, one dollar even, taxi to the office of Northeast Indemnity where Joe McNabb was waiting for me. It's kind of a complicated situation, Johnny. Yeah, well, it usually is when people get shot at, Joe. Now, mind, we're not sure the bullet was meant for Harvey Stone. He's inclined to brush the whole thing off, thinks somebody might have been doing a little target practice in the woods. Stray shot, huh? Well, could be. Yes, yes, but with the kind of insurance we're carrying on... Yeah, him, better give me a rundown on him. Harvey's father, E.J., built up the business, a widower. Two years ago, he remarried. Last year, he had to retire. He's in a wheelchair now. I see. Well, now Harvey is running things. Lives with his father and stepmother in a big place in Westchester County, but he also keeps a small apartment on East 57th in Manhattan. Uh hmm any trouble in the family? Anything like that? Harvey's been running around lately with a supper club singer named Helen Barrett. I gather he's thinking of marrying her. I also gather his family is bitterly opposed to the idea. How about Harvey's business affairs? Could he have made any enemies there? One, at least. Who? Oh. Dutch Krieger. Know him? Yeah, I sure do. A gambler with a lot of dough behind him and a couple of gunsels in front. That's the one. Now, how come he get mixed up with a character like Krieger? He didn't. Refused to. Come again. Krieger's put on a big act about going legitimate. Young Stone was negotiating a sizable real estate transaction recently. Found out that Krieger was one of the associates in the deal. He threatened to call it all off. Made the other associates kick Krieger out. Oh, Dutch wouldn't forget a thing like that. No, he wouldn't. Well, who's the beneficiary on Stone's insurance policies? Father and stepmother jointly. Johnny, I smell trouble. I want you to go down there and nose around and see what you can turn up. And do me a slight favor. Sure. What is it? Keep Harvey Stone alive, will you? Expense account item two, $12.50, transportation and incidentals to the Stone Estate in Westchester County. It was one of those massive, dignified-looking places, nestling comfortably in about 10 acres of grounds. The butler showed me into a room only about half as big as Grand Central Station, so I wandered around inspecting the paneling and the Italian works of art. Then I zeroed in on one of the paintings. It involved a luscious lady, a bunch of grapes, and a pool of water. Nice, isn't it? Hmm? Yeah. The painting, I mean. Quite nice, isn't it? Oh, (laughs) yeah, if you like grapes. You must be... I'm uh... Mrs. Stone, Mr. Dollar. Daphne Stone. Mrs., I didn't know the wedding had taken place. My, you are behind the times. It took place two years ago. Two? Well, I, uh... I'm Mrs. E.J. Stone. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, uh, is your, uh, stepson here? Harvey, he should be back any minute. He had to run into the city. But let me give you a tip, Mr. Dollar. Don't call Harvey my stepson in front of him. Oh. You see, he and I are just about the same age, and he's... Yeah, oh, okay, I'll remember. Uh, how about Harvey's father? Is he here? Yes, my husband will be along in just a moment. 
He has to get around in a wheelchair now, but he's very stubborn. Won't let anyone push him. Well, uh, Mrs. Stone, I think you know why I'm here. Yes, of course. About that absurd thing that happened to Harvey last night. Absurd? Well, isn't it ridiculous to think that it was an attempt on his life? After all, he will go tearing around these roads at night in his sports car. Probably someone out hunting. Is that what you think, Mrs. Stone? What else could it be? Nobody has any reason to kill Harvey. Everything harmonious here at home, I suppose. Of course. How about Harvey's plans to marry Helen Barrett? Oh, yes, that. That? Mr. Dollar, say, I'm getting a little weary of that name. It's Johnny, isn't it? Yeah. And Daphne. Johnny, let me give you another tip. (laughs) You seem to be full of them. Uh, What's this one, Daphne? I wouldn't mention Harvey's fiancé to his father. Oh? Mr. Stone is quite violently opposed to the match. How about you, Daphne? How do you feel about it? Why, anything Harvey wants. Oh, Edward, this is Mr. Dollar. Yes, yes, I know. Hello, Mr. Stone. That idiot McNabb from the insurance company phoned me about you, Dollar. Worries like an old woman. Seems to think that fool accident Harvey had last night is an attempted murder. Oh, he's just taking normal precautions, Mr. Stone. Precautions. Well, just as well, I suppose. Harvey could use a nursemaid. He always manages to get things fouled up somehow. Now, Edward, You want to see my orchids, Dollar? Orchids? Of course you do. This way, out in the solarium. Okay. Oh, here, let me push you. Never mind. I can manage. All my good advice. Sorry, Daphne. This way, Dollar. I'll have a drink for you when you're ready, Johnny. Thanks. Well, here we are. Well, some orchids. Who cares about orchids? Just wanted to talk to you. Well, what do you make of this business, Dollar? About Harvey, I mean. That bullet in his windshield last night. You really figure somebody's trying to kill him? Well, I I don't know, Mr. Stone. That's why I'm here to find out. Well, I don't know who it'd be. Harvey's not a bad sort, really. Terrible businessman. Oh, how so? I could run the Stone Corporation better than he does for my wheelchair. He uh, doesn't do things your way, huh? Nothing's like it used to be. Everything's done differently now. Maybe it has to be. Has to be. Business is business. Yeah. Well, how about his fiancée? I suppose you disapprove of her, too. Helen Barrett? (laughs) No, by golly, I... Got to hand it to Harvey there. Don't quite know how he managed to land someone like her. Wait a minute. You mean you're not opposed to his marrying her? More power to him. Chip off the old block, I guess. What's that mean? Oh, I did the same thing. That's what. Picked himself a Broadway girl. You mean Mrs. Stone, Daphne? Right out of musical comedy. I see. How does she feel about Helen Barrett? Yeah, it won't seem to warm up to her. Oh, well, how can you figure out a woman? Yeah, how can you? So it's Daphne that disapproves of Helen. That's very interesting. Interesting? It's a nuisance. Here's your drink, Johnny. Oh, oh, thanks, Daphne. Uh, Mr. Stone, you're not having any? No, that fool doctor of mine says no. Edward, you look tired. Perhaps you'd better rest. Tired? Who's tired? Well, then, just one more question, Mr. Stone. What is it? Do you know of anyone who might want to kill Harvey? Once in a while, I sure would. Edward. I I tell you, when I think of how he's running that business into the ground, I could... I could wring his neck. Edward, it's no time for jokes. Johnny, this whole thing is ridiculous. Harvey hasn't an enemy in the world. Well, have you gotten me nicely taken apart by now, people? (laughs) Harvey, dear. Hello, Daphne. Father. Uh, This is Dollar, Harvey. Jimmy, isn't it? Uh, Johnny. Yes, I heard Mr. Dollar was coming. And why? How are you? You look tired, Harvey. Let me fix you a drink. Thanks. Darling. Thanks, darling. <laughs> you know, Dollar, sometimes I wonder which one of us is married to Daphne. That was a perfectly charming thing to say, Edward. Yes, Father, you seem to be in unusually good form tonight. This is for the benefit of our guests, no doubt. Uh, uh, look, if I could just talk to you for a moment, Harvey. Oh, don't mind these little exchanges, Johnny. If you're around this place very long, you'll get used to them. Ah, good night. Good night, Father. Mr. Stone. Like a drink now, Harvey? Oh, never mind, Daphne. I can manage. All right. I'll go on up then. I hope we'll be seeing you again, Johnny. Oh, you probably will. Good night. I, um, I'm sorry about that business with Father just now, Johnny. Most of the time, he thinks it's fine that Daphne and I get on so well together, but sometimes he doesn't. I suppose now he's in the wheelchair, he feels the difference in their ages even more. Yeah. And ever since I've taken over the management of the corporation, well, 
Oh, I'm sure he must have made it very clear he doesn't approve of my policies. And he's probably right. Oh? Well, my heart's not in it, really. But somebody had to take over. Look, uh, Harvey, you said you knew why I was here. Oh, sure. About that silly business last evening. Well, what exactly happened? Well, I have a new sports car that I'm fond of. I went for a drive. You know, there are some pretty good country roads around here. Mm -hmm. And I slowed for a sharp turn, and I heard what I thought was a backfire. But my windshield shattered. It was a bullet. Well, what'd you do then? I stopped to warn whoever it was to keep away from the roads. It didn't occur to you that somebody might be trying to kill you? Oh, well, good Lord, no. Look, Johnny, I used to roam these woods when I was a kid, taking pot shots at fence posts. That's obviously what happened last night. You didn't see anyone when you stopped? No, it was probably some kid. He's probably still running. And you can't think of anyone who might want to kill you? Of course not. How about Dutch Krieger? Krieger, the gambler? I understand he was involved in a business deal you were thinking of making. You refused to go through with it until his associates dumped him. Of course. After all, the name Stone does have a pretty honorable history. I couldn't very well have it connected with somebody like Krieger. Well, Dutch wouldn't forget a thing like that. Uh, look, about your fiance, Helen Barrett. Uh, Johnny, I suggest you confine your questions to subjects not quite so personal. All right, so I sound nosy, but you're heavily insured, Harvey, and that bullet last night could have been meant for you. My job is to find out if there's anyone who could possibly have any reason to kill you. There isn't. Do you know of anyone who's opposed to your marriage? I told you I'd rather not talk about that. Anyway, there's a good chance there isn't going to be any marriage. No. What do you mean? Look, Johnny, I have a good idea. It's almost time for the last train into the city. I'll drive you to the station. <laughs> A polite but firm message that the interview was over. Harvey got called to the phone and I went outside to wait for him. Daphne had lied when she told me Harvey's father opposed the marriage to nightclub singer Helen Barrett. It was Daphne who didn't like the idea. She and Harvey seemed pretty chummy and the old man didn't seem to like that. Harvey had crossed a rough boy named Dutch Krieger in a business deal and it's a cinch Dutch didn't like that. And now Harvey just told me there might not be a marriage, which indicated some kind of trouble there. All in all, it looked like a cozy little powder keg. Then as I started for Harvey's car, the keg exploded right in my stomach in the form of a fist. I couldn't see who they were, but the two of them really knew their business, the way they worked me over. Hard enough to hurt, not hard enough to put me out. Finally, I guess they got bored. One of them did me a favor. He put me away. <laughs> Here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of this week's story. Tomorrow? Well, look, you should never get in a card game with a professional gambler. He can deal you any card he wants, even the ace of spades, the death card. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. Mm -hmm.